Oh, great rising, beautiful beings, great rising, natural beings. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the layers of the human anatomy. We know we got the flesh, the most dense, low vibratory rate. And then we have the energetic bodies. We have the astral body, which is the same body outside of the fleshly body that moves and walk within this matrix. But it's tethered to the physical body. And then you have your source light, your source energies, um, soul, which is a grander scheme of you, probably bigger than Earth itself. So let's talk about something. The destroyer. This is why they phase out men within communities. They phase out men within regions, nations, states, countries. They they weed them out. They thin them out. Always. The destroyer. The God within. You know, I think about the astral projection. How many of you out there astral body actually protects your physical body when you sleep armored geared up waiting for another person to hop out of their astral body to fuck with you okay so one thing i've noticed about my astral body that it it comes equipped it comes ready it can walk around it can look at me on the bed, but not actually, it doesn't want to see me because then it knows it want to go back home to the vessel, which that's not its home. It just knows when, when the body restores its energy, rebuilds its energy from resting, that it has to go back to the body and to the body perish, right? But I notice that my astral body walks around, protects, communicate with other uh, other entities. Not in my sleep realm. They're actually here. So your astral body can talk to entities that can't be seen with the naked eye because they're on the same frequency. It's a different frequency that cannot be seen with the naked eye with most people. So remember that time I told y'all that a lot of people that come to me talk about they deal with a shadow with red eyes. So for a few years, this guy would come to the flea market and he would always tell me about the shadow with the red eyes that be at the foot of his bed. And I'm like, dude, it's like year two, year three. You still telling me about this shadow. So a guy came and got a reading. And he said he has a problem with a shadow at the end of his bed with red eyes. I said, somebody else mentioned this entity to me. So the white guy come back around again. And he mentions the shadow again. I said, you know what? I want to meet this shadow. I want to meet him. So I reached my hand out and he looked at me like, what is she doing? I said, shake my hand. And he shook my hand. And as he was shaking my hand, I said, I give you permission to come to my place. My astro body was so fucking pissed, y'all. My astro body was sitting up out of my torso, like the same way I would lift up and the crease of my bikini line sit up. That's how he was sitting up out of my chest. And I don't know why I say he is, but maybe my astro body is not actually a female. Maybe my astro body is asking 
actually more masculine, like straight up. So here my astro body sitting up out of my chest. This tall, wild haired person that reminds me of my mother came in with a trench coat on. He went into the room. He came in with a trench coat on and he said, hi, would you like one blanket or two? My astral body, remember, is sitting up. My body is asleep. My body is dead. It's resting. So all I know when, when the, when the thing said, would you like one blanket or two? My astral body said, no, it was a whole different voice. It's not, it wasn't my little sweet, little innocent voice. It was a voice with authority, like a destroyer. Like, you fuck around and find out. You fuck around and find out. So when he told the entity with the trench coat on and the wild hair with the two blankets. So I guess the thing wanted to come in the room and he was going to have a blanket and I was going to have a blanket or I say, oh, all we need is one blanket, you know, and the astral body was actually sitting out of my torso and was like, no. And so the thing had left. So after that, one night I was sleeping in one of my campers like a month or so later and a shadow entity came with blue eyes but he had on a yellow raincoat because he wanted me to be able to see him. But I'm like, dude, if you didn't even have the fucking raincoat on, I could still see those laser blue eyes. They look electrifying. Like something was electrically pulsating through the eyes, but he had on a yellow raincoat and he just kept staring at me in the bed. And I kept, my astral body kept staring at him like, long as you stay over there, we'll stay over here. But this is, this is what the system don't want you to know. That ninja inside of you is a force to be reckoned with. Imagine if you were on the proper minerals, the proper diet, the proper exercise, the proper elements like sun, water, ether, uh, everything you needed to combust in your own natural way, right? With all your supernatural powers. Imagine you probably would uh, fix depression, fix anxiety, fix parts of your body that's yearning for more that energy that that energy that's in you is only being constrained by your weak vessel your limited vessel once it's outside the vessel it dare motherfucker to run up that's why i was telling a while back i was saying you know what you may be winning while I'm in this limited vessel, but let me get outside this vessel. I'm going to fuck some shit up. So it just reminded me about the dream I had last night where my astral body was not at ease. He was actually walking around the house, casing out the place as if Something was in the house that did not belong. I mean, a gremlin, angry side of this astral body of mine came out. That's why I said I had to wake up and assess the situation because something was out of place. And I've never seen my astral body so angry before in my life. So whatever took place that night, I won't allow it to happen again because my astral body didn't like it. My astral body felt like we was either in harm's way, something was crossing the boundaries or the lines, and it wasn't having it. Like my astral body literally 
went to the living room and would not leave the living room. He was scoping. He was just scoping the area out like, motherfucker, you bed not move. Motherfucker, you bed not. You bed not hop out that body and start walking around in here. Like, my astro body went ham. I swear to God, my astro body literally snapped. My astro body cased out the living room, the hallway, back and forth. It just wouldn't stop. It was so ridiculous. I thought my psyche had got caught in a loop. But it wasn't a loop. It was real. So... It's been plenty of times I've been asleep. I could be in a hotel and I could have spoke to somebody earlier that day or gave them eye contact, right? And we'll meet down at the lobby and have a full conversation. And when they speak to each other in the flesh and in the blood. So whatever was happening, Astro Body was letting a certain species or entity no you better not jump out that body you better not start walking around here in your astral body you don't run shit you're not supposed to be here like it was snapping I didn't know and I was like but what you talking to and I realized Oh, you forgot, didn't you? And I was like, well, what the fuck? What What is in this person to the point you snapped like that? Like, it would not allow the person to escape his body. It would not allow it. It was crazy. I, I When I say I had to wake up out my sleep, and 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 go case the joint out too to see what was going on. I realized what my astral body was doing. It wouldn't allow, allow the other person to astro body. It knew what it was. It didn't want nan day of it. It didn't even want to give it the benefit of the doubt to exit the body and walk around. I I don't know why. I don't know why, maybe maybe one day they'll meet up, but they wouldn't allow the energy to walk in the space at all. The in, It made the energy stay in the body. Like, motherfucker, I dare you to get out your body. Like, that's what it did. And I, I was shocked. I was, I was completely embarrassed. So your God force energy and your, your, your energetic bodies have energetic boundaries and as long as they limit these vessels and deplete them to access the codes and the dna to tap in you cannot actually know what your destroyer energy is all about your destroyer and protector energy is all about right there was another time i was at my mother's house and um a guy was helping me for about two years. We was, we was working on some projects. He would sleep downstairs. I, I had to hold upstairs. And we would never hold deep conversations. Like, we would go out on missions and do shit. But once we got in the house, I probably didn't see him for like two or three days. He probably didn't see me for like two or three days. But I would tell him when I would run into him, I was like, do you dream about me? And he was like, no. I was like, are you sure? No. I was like, man, I've had so many deja vus where we meet in the kitchen and talk. We sit down there and talk for hours. Even my stepfather's like that. I would literally meet my stepfather somewhere and say, you like it over here? You like this side? Because he's he got narcolepsy. So he's always sleep. 
And it was like my astro body had concern for him. So he was questioning him like, you going to you gonna get it together? You going to... You going to fix your narcolepsy? Like, you like it over here? You be over here a lot, man. It seemed like you be over here more than you be in your awake life. So my astral body was questioning him about what he felt about the difference of his awake life versus his sleep life, where his astral body is just running around free. So... Just remember, there's a reason why they depleted these bodies, uh, reconstructed the DNA so you can't tap in unless you put in a lot of discipline, a lot of yoga, meditation, cleansing, detoxing. You know, you have to alter your reality, alter your perception channel the energy through your body start cycling it so you can identify with self but outside of self there's an energy that they don't want you to know about that's why they keep saying that they want you to disconnect from your soul and your spirit your ether your source energy they want you to disconnect from it and I realized that the way my astral body was casing the area last night, he was with the shits. He was like, I dare a motherfucker to walk around in this bitch beside me. Besides me. He was on a whole nother height. And it scared me. It scared me because... I didn't understand why my vision kept having me in the living room, walking down the hallway and walking back. And I was muttering and frustrated and furious and like, why am I walking around in my own house doing this? But it wasn't me. It was my astral body, my astral energy, casing the place out, making sure nothing else was trying to you know, do some shit. And like I say, my astral body is able to talk to energies that I cannot see, that I am not aware of. And yours do the same thing too. So remember, these bodies have energies that are well, uh, well past, well past the energetic level, the quantum physics that they study. But they know if they keep the bodies dumbed down, depleted, lack of energy, lack of rest, you can't tap in. You cannot synchronize all layers of yourself to be one atomic structure, okay? So when you do synchronize all layers of yourself, you can dematerialize, vanish, teleport, everything. You're all and be all. You are the I. When you calibrate yourself to the point where you're just the I, you are the I of the beholder, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. So I just wanted to say that your astral body can kick ass just like your energetic body can and just like your physical body can. Your astral body is just a body that contains all levels of yourself without the vessel. That's right. But remember, the vessel holds different light structures that leave when the body perishes. So if the body is deceased, the Bindu seed, which holds the soul, leaves. The Kundalini energy leaves. 
the astral body is no longer tethered. The astral body is actually tethered in multiple locations like the planet, source energy, and you. It's not just tethered to the body because there's times when the astral body can be released from the physical body like a wreck, death before it's time or something. And it's walking around on the planet. It's still tethered to the planet. It just don't have a body to go into. Okay. So just know like hell, if you get in tune with self, your pineal gland is not calcified. You can see and imagine you are a seer. You can see and imagine vividly in your dreams, in your sleep realm. And not only that, you are aware when your astral body needs to run rampant because your astral body will run rampant. Sometimes it goes and fly off and orbit and wee wee all day. And sometimes it, it, it has to do other things. Like I say, I've seen it speak to spiritual entities all the time. And they're not so spiritual. They're just on the same frequency as your astral body. That's the difference. They're on that same thin frequency that cannot be identified no other way but through your third eye. It's interesting. Just know it's a destroyer power. It's a protector power. And they don't want you to know you have it. Why you think Bobby Hemmett said when all the baby boomers came to the planet, they come to fight. So what they did, they sent them to a fake war. That's why I say they take all the men, thin the herd, knock them off, leaving nothing but women and children to be raised by foreign men. Aliens. So... Try to tap into your astral body. See what it wants. See what it needs. See what it yearns. Try to pay attention when you go to sleep. To see what direction it's going in. And what it's doing. So just know that if you can recalibrate your DNA, restore it, rejuvenate it. You can tap into other layers of your existence. Source energy, kundalini energy, uh, pyrokinesis, telepathy. You can tap into it all, but it takes... Uh, inner, inner engineering ingenuity of your biosphere, okay? You have to learn how to train your biosphere to recalibrate your DNA. You do. But yeah, once I see my astral body tripping, like something was in the wrong place at the wrong time and it wasn't going to allow that shit to be around here. This ain't your place. You, you better not jump out the body. You better just stay asleep. Stay with your body. But you ain't walk around this motherfucker. Nope. Nope. My astral body. My astral body was not having it. And it was some strong, deep, deep stuff going on now what i was supposed to see or what i was supposed to experience it didn't go down like that but um uh, yeah that's it just know your astral body will protect you while it will protect the physical vessel 
while it sleeps. You know, there's one more thing I want to say. I don't know if it was a Bobby Hammett story or actual story, but I think Bobby Hammett said something about this white lady used to be jealous. It's the old time, probably 1700s, early 1800s. So this lady had a boyfriend because her husband liked to sleep. He liked to go to other dimensions and realms. And it was better than his awake life. It was pretty nice, well-off people. They had like a mansion or something, castle. And she called her boyfriend over and said, he's gone again. And he act like he don't want to come back. And uh, we said, they said, we just going to leave him over there. So they burnt his body up while he was sleeping, made him stay in the uh, astral realm, in the dream world. He couldn't come back to his body no more. They killed the body. It's just something to think about. Unearth the magic. The truth will definitely set you free. Mwah.